This is the Clear Money Talk podcast, offering up creative solutions for your retirement future through education, choice, transparency, and empathy. Now, your host, CEO and founder of Clear Financial Partners, Tim Claremont. Hello and welcome to Clear Money Talk. I am your host, founder and CEO of Clear Financial Partners. And as always, I am ecstatic to have my uh, my illustrious, my wondrous, my amazing right-hand guy, Tyler Andrews. Thank you, Tim. It's, it's fun to be in the podcast studio. We got a different perspective, a little bit of a different angle for our, our loyal fans and, and followers. And they might be seeing us without headphones and with a different camera angle today so that's right that's um, right you know, we're, you know, we're testing it out there there are so many relationships that matter in your life you know when you really think about it and i mean i'm 47 i'm coming up on 48 years old now and good good friend of mine all the way back from high school we stay in touch uh, on a weekly basis and he's a, a guru at video audio stuff like that so i appreciate his guidance he's uh, he's helping us make uh, make us look a little look a little better and yeah that's we'll take good. anything we can get that's <laughs> right that's right we can use it so um without further ado let's jump into our topic for the day i know you're dying to find out what question are we going to answer i'm dying to find out i have a sense of it but please tyler what's what's the question yeah, for the let's, day? let's dive right into it uh, our topic of the day how should business owners plan for retirement ah yes yeah Yes, I was so actually I uh, had a have a very good friend of mine who's a financial advisor out of Pennsylvania and he shared with the, me this this quote uh, that he's he's identified as he self-identified with a lot of his clients and he said Tim to me he said Tim I have found over the years there's two kinds of people in the world there's 1099 people and W2 people and I was like okay I get that like obviously you know everybody's unique everybody is uh, is special and I appreciate and value uh, all of those differences but it is different to run a business versus being an employee. When you're an employee, you have a 401k plan, you have a lot of benefits and things like that that are set up for you. Planning to retire uh, is different as an employee. As a business owner, nobody's taking care of that. A lot of times the business owner clients that we work with on a regular basis are, are actually struggling so hard just to cover their bills. And many of them will actually not pay themselves because they're trying to pay their employees for extended periods of time. And and a lot of times they'll suffer through that because it's their baby, it's, it's their business. And, and that's that's how a lot of small business owners uh, get started. But if they neglect their own retirement savings, they end up at the end and there was never that 401k there for them to save into or or no pension plan for them to lean into because they were so busy just trying to keep the doors open and and run the business successfully. Obviously, there are those business owners that that uh, have had tremendous success and, and those are all the yeah. ones that I think many people aspire to have that kind of uh, financial success when, when there's you know millions of dollars for people to decide, oh, I can do all kinds of cool stuff with that. But the majority of business owners that we work with on a regular basis are everyday folk uh, trying to make ends meet, you know, one week at a time, one day at a time, sometimes uh, one month at a time, depending on how, uh, how the business is going. So I uh, thought we'd give you a little bit of insight into how to plan for retirement today. So how should business owners plan for retirement? Uh, that's a different question. That is. It's a loaded question too. I mean, we could tackle this from a lot of different angles. I mean, you have individuals that are single member LLC type sole proprietors that are just one person running a business. They're doing everything themselves. And then you have people that have companies with hundreds of employees, potentially dozens, a couple handful of different owners. So, and I feel like both ends of those equations can be drastically different if you're trying to plan for retirement from a business owner perspective. Is that kind of your take on it too, Tim? Yeah, yeah. There's plus you have legacy situations. Like sometimes you have the business owner who started the business, as they often refer to them as first generation. Then you have second generation and third generation business owners that might be inheriting the business and trying to take it over. Many businesses actually fail at those transition points. You know, very mm -hmm. few succeed in transitioning to the second generation. Even fewer succeed transferring to the third generation. So there are so many different nuances and, and subtleties when you're dealing with trying to figure out how do you plan for retirement because for many people retirement means letting go of the reins it means letting your business go to somebody else and sometimes that just means shutting the doors uh, more often than not uh, i would say nine out of ten businesses that i've seen they do not successfully get sold uh, a lot of times people believe that their retirement plan is going to be successfully selling their business to some third party and they're going to get a big paycheck when that happens and they're going to retire on that big check. And I see that happen very rarely. That's, I mean, yes, we work with many clients who are dealing with that issue. If you're dealing with that issue, it's a wonderful situation to be in. But I would, I would argue that statistically it's probably more like nine out of 10 where they just close the doors. 
Uh, I remember my favorite Indian restaurant downtown, Bombay Cricket Club. It was such a great Indian mm-hmm. restaurant. I, I would go there all the time. And I went in and the, the owner of the restaurant, you know, he'd, he'd shake my hand. And we'd, you know, I love chicken tikka masala. India is my favorite food. Um, and he told me, he said, Tim, I'm retiring. I was like, oh, man. Uh, and he was retiring to Costa Rica. And I was like, oh, I was happy for him, but I was sad for me because I didn't get to eat as good Indian food <laughs> anymore. And and the new restaurant that went into place, is, it's not the same. It's never the same. And you know, so yeah. what does your retirement look like as a business owner? It's just, it's just very different. But we'll give you some answers. So let's give you some insights into some quick things to look for in terms of planning for retirement as a business owner. Yeah, I think that's a good a, a good point to start at, Tim. If, if we have a business owner listening to our podcast right now, what are step one, two, three, four things that they could be doing right now to implement into their business to help set them up for long-term success from a retirement planning perspective? Because that's that's what we do, right? We're experts in retirement income planning, so that's our bread and butter. And um, I I think there's a lot of value that you can give to people in the podcast right now. Yeah, no, I, happy to happy to assist. I, actually, when I first got into this industry, 21 years old, I was uh, at Whitman College, Walla Walla, Washington, and they, there was a financial advisor that came on campus to interview for jobs. I was going to go off to law school and become a tax attorney. That was my ambition. So, um, whether you're uh, glad that I didn't do that, so that now you got to listen to me do this, or disappointed because I could have brought some amazing skills to your uh, table with as my tax law knowledge, um, I, it is what it is. But but what I am doing is. I'm now doing financial planning because of something that individual said in that interview. And in that interview, what he said is, Tim, you can teach business owners to contribute twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars a year into these qualified retirement plans, 401ks, simple SEPs, KIOs, pension plans. As a business owner, one of the unique opportunities you have is you're not limited to just your IRA contribution or your Roth IRA contribution. You can set up your own qualified retirement plan that gives you much larger contribution limits so that you can play catch up if you haven't been doing a good job saving all along uh, and and contribute significant amount of money for yourselves to retirement. Simultaneously, you can also take care of your employees in a very cost-effective way that provides a retirement plan benefit for them. So if you don't have a benefit plan set up for your employees, or if you don't have employees, therefore you thought you didn't need a benefit plan, one of the easiest low-hanging fruit ways to make sure that you're positioning yourself well for retirement is to seriously consider using a qualified retirement plan like a 401k or a single 401k if you don't have employees or if you're only employees, maybe your spouse or your business partner uh, and you don't have any other employees. Those can be extremely cost-effective, and if you haven't looked at them lately, um, it's worth checking it out. A lot of times people think that's going to cost them thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to set up. And the reality is a single 401k, if it's just you and your wife or just you with no employees uh, or just you and a business partner, uh, you're eligible for single 401ks where you can set them up with as little as you know, 25, 50 bucks a year in administrative expenses and mm-hmm. then stuff in as much as uh, $23,000 a year of your contributions pre-tax or post-tax into a Roth contribution. And then you can also make catch-up contributions if you're 50 years old or older, up to $30,000 per year. And then on top of that, you can make profit-sharing contributions. So the profit-sharing could be up to 25% of your net Schedule C earnings uh, minus one half of self-employment tax or mm-hmm. 25% of your W-2 earnings if you're a W-2 co- you know, contributor, up to mm-hmm. over $70,000 a year, uh, yep. which is huge. So it's like this giant bucket of money that could be set aside for you if you have the extra money there in a very tax-efficient and favorable way. Uh, and possibly at very, very low administrative cost. So if that's something you were unaware of and you want to learn more about it, that's definitely the kind of stuff we do, and we're happy to assist you with that. Uh, there's other things. So that's really just bullet number one. That's uh, Yeah, that's <laughs> just like the, the foundation. Yeah, and, uh, and, and you can do that for single-member businesses, but also larger businesses, and there's a lot of value, too, in setting up a 401k qualified retirement plan for employees as well, right? I mean, you get the employee retention aspect. You can, you know, obviously contribute to the betterment of your employees, which um, increases, uh, you know, their longevity at the firm, but also their betterment of... of yeah, it could of de- the, decrease your turnover. Yeah, could, decrease uh, yeah. turnover and, and all those things, increase, you know, productivity and all that. So their commitment. The, like, you more know, than I, just one benefit, I guess, is the quick answer to that. Yeah, I mean, I'm always looking for that golden handcuff I can stick on Tyler that's going to make exactly. him never, ever, ever leave. So I don't want to leave, you yeah, know. Right, Tim keeps hitting right. me with the profit-sharing contributions right. of the 401k, <laughs> so <laughs> it makes it harder to leave. That's right. That's and why would I ever want to leave, you know? Uh, we have too true. much fun. Uh, that's exactly the right thing yeah. to say, Tyler. Well done. You're welcome. All right, let's move on to the next right. thing. Let's I know on. you had something teed up. Well, yeah, no, 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 bullet. So bullet two. So I, I do want to go back and reiterate a little bit piece of advice that I was sharing implicitly and anecdotally at the beginning, which is specifically 
don't count on selling your business. That can't be your number one only plan for retirement. Many times people have a challenge with that. If you're thinking that selling your business is going to be your primary retirement plan, I want you to do this exercise mentally right now. Imagine that your strongest competitor was going to sell their business. How much would you pay for it? Because that's what they're going to be looking to pay you for your business when you go to sell your business. A lot of times people think, oh, my business is worth so much, so much, so much. Like it's only worth what somebody else is willing to pay. And if you're going to buy a business from your strongest competitor, what would you be willing to pay for that? That's the way you need to start thinking about how much your business is worth. So yes, it's, it is a real asset. Your business is an asset. You want to manage it. You want to position yourself for the best opportunity for sale if it's there. But let's have that be you know, your plan A. Let's have a strong plan B. And plan B is what if you don't get anything? What if you just have to shut the doors? What if I don't get to eat the Indian food in your restaurant anymore? <laughs> that's, and that's the way it goes down. Well, you know, you just need to make sure you saved enough along the way. We tell our employees always, you know, and not just employees at Clear Financial Partners, but employee clients, always make sure you're saving at least 10 to 20% of your income on a regular basis into a long-term retirement planning account. That's just a smart baseline to work with. And then make sure you're investing it appropriately. Who's telling you as the business owner to make sure you're saving 10 to 20% of your income? When you're juggling your revenue that's coming in, your expenses that are going out, and trying to figure out how you're going to get your employees paid adequately in those down months, and maybe not even taking a paycheck for a period of time, as I know many of you are doing in those situations, you know, on the other hand, what if you take that paycheck, you're taking those distributions, and you're living the lifestyle, and you're saying, man, I work 24-7, I deserve this, I earned this, and you're just not having that own your self-discipline to save you've got to create your own system as well to say, I'm going to make sure I at least save this much. And it doesn't have to be the same every month. You can just have a target goal each year. A lot of business owners don't have regular income. It's true. They'll have good months, they'll have bad months. And so it, it doesn't have to be that regular paycheck contribution. You just have a target objective and make sure you hit it every single year. Find those windfall moments when you got the extra money coming in. And make sure you set aside a good chunk of that to hit a target goal on an annual basis. So don't count on the sale of your business. That would be number two. Okay. Um, yeah, number one, you know, low-hanging fruit, contribute to a retirement income plan. Mm -hmm. and, then, uh, and then I would say number three is... The other extreme example that I see happening with, with business owner clients is you might believe in your heart of hearts that you're going to die with your boots on. You are going to work until the day you die because you absolutely love doing what it is that you do. That's not a good retirement plan either. <laughs> as much as you love doing what you do, uh, the fact is over 60% of people that retire, retire unwillingly. Uh, that's just the way it is. It's the way it is in the United States. And many of the times, the majority of those, it's from health reasons. So people will, if they are forced to work in the United States, you're working, you're just trying to pay the bills, you don't have enough money to retire, you go into transitioning retirement, you just lose your job or and, and there's nobody there to replace it, or you just have to quit your job because of health reasons. That can happen to you as a business owner. What happens if you can't do your job? Is your business set to run itself? You know, if you have a business where you're owning it and it's running itself, that's a beautiful, wonderful thing. But that transition is a long road for a lot of people. Most business owners I meet are very integral to that business. The business is not running itself without that business owner. As soon as you go to retire, that business isn't functioning. And you need to make sure that, you know, if you can't work anymore and the business isn't functioning, what is your plan B for that? And, and that needs to be adequate retirement income, you know, set aside in, in appropriate locations. Number four, non-qualified retirement planning accounts. There are some really cool things that you could do that don't have to follow the regular rules of 401ks and things like that. You know, one of our previous shows, we talked about LERPs, mm -hmm. life insurance retirement plans. Yeah. That could be an excellent resource for our business owners. Um, sometimes yeah. they'll choose that over the 401k just because of the cost of profit sharing and matching might be cost prohibitive. Maybe yeah. you can't do a 401k and you're thinking there's nowhere else you can save your money. Well, a LERP or a non-qualified investment portfolio could be another alternative. So uh, there's always a place to save your money. You just have to make sure you find the smartest first place to go. And then if that doesn't work for you, go to the second smartest <laughs> place to go. And then the third and the fourth. Uh, if you're not sure what that is, I mean, that's that's what people like us, you know, that's what we do. So yeah. That's how we take care of this stuff. So yeah. Um, so that's four. What else comes to your mind, Tyler? We got. I, I'm sure we got more. Well, I mean, there's a lot of advanced strategies that I think we're trying to, you know, tailor what we're saying to the audience right now, but also, you know, keep our show length to, to a minimum because <laughs> we could talk about this for hours. Le legitimately, there's enough 
strategies, um, retirement plans, especially for business owners, that we could talk about this for many, many, many shows, many hours. So we're trying to tailor it to that. But I mean, there, there's all kinds of additional, there's, there's pension plans. So we obviously have qualified retirement plans like 401ks, simple IRAs, SEPs, things like that that you already talked about. There's also pension plans, you know, a defined benefit plan is another word for those. Defined contribution plans are like the traditional 401k type plans, things like that. Um, but then there's also SERPs, Supplement Income Retirement Plans, these non-qualified deferred comp plans. And all of these things have a place. It's, it's finding the place for those things. Dude, Does that make such, sense? We're such nerds. Yeah. I know. People are watching this. It's, listen it's like, like <laughs> we might have a business owner come to us and say, hey, I just, I, I heard They're on this like, podcast that Tim yeah. and Tyler were on. They, they, they were talking about a SERP, a supplement. <laughs> I don't even know what that is, but I want to do it. And it's like, well, maybe that might yeah. not make sense for you. Um, and that's where talking to somebody like Tim or myself, or if you have somebody you trust, talking to them about this because these things can become complex. And yeah, totally, you know. totally. Well, it, it, since most of the people listening, I would imagine they're identifying with this are probably business owners. Just imagine your yes. business. You know, if you plugged either Tyler or I into your business mm -hmm. and asked us to do your job for the day, like how bad would your business suck at the end <laughs> of the day? <laughs> like it would be not more than likely ninety eight percent of you that would not be good. <laughs> like yeah. it is probably not our wheelhouse. You know, very specialist knowledge. Uh, there are certain things that you know have to go this way, can't go this way, must do it this way, don't screw up this stuff, make sure you keep this thing going. I mean, you are spinning tops, and you've got 30 tops spinning, and if you plug anybody else in that, that best maybe Tyler and I could spin three or four. We're going to drop <laughs> the other 27, and that business is going to go down. Immediately, down. yeah. It's the same thing with what we do. Like, for you to try to, on the side be a financial advisor and figure out what a SEP and a simple and a Keo and a SERP and all this other stuff is, is just not efficient. It's not the best use of your time and energy. Like you've got Correct. to outsource that stuff to people that understand what they're doing. Yeah. And that's, that's what we do. So, and if you have a great financial advisor already, that's awesome. We genuinely don't want to replace good relationships. We're, there's plenty of people out there that have no advisor, don't think they qualify for an advisor or they have an advisor they're not particularly fond of, or that advisor maybe is no longer doing the job they previously were doing. And if you're not happy with your advisor, you don't have an advisor, um, yeah, get a hold of us. That's that's what we do. So you can yeah. always call us. We'll just have initial no cost, no obligation conversation, right? We call it a GAC. GAC, get acquainted call. That's right, get acquainted Get call. acquainted with us. We'll <laughs> get acquainted with you to see if it's a good fit. If it's a good fit, maybe we can take it to the next step. But How do they reach us, Tyler? 503-579-1000. <laughs> that's right. Or email us at admin, A-D-M-I-N, at clearfp.com. There we go. That's good. That's good. And our website is, of course, clearf. clearfp.com. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Clearfp. Felt a little sales pitchy. It that's did not what we're about. We're that's about right. education, no, not, it, not, not it, sales. That's but. okay, though. Every now and then, it's kind of fun to lean into. Yeah, it's true. If you're watching the YouTube video, you can see the nonverbals with us, and you can that's see right. how intentionally semi-sarcastic we are with the way that we're articulating this. <laughs> if you can't quite hear that in our audio tone, then you know, maybe you can watch the video. The video, I yeah, suppose. that's it's always available there. Okay. Um, okay, getting back to the uh, to the question, how should business owners plan for retirement? So we talked about a lot of the investment related stuff, yep. setting up you know four hundred one k plans, you know making sure you're socking away enough money to save so that way you have a bucket of money later on down the road to take care of you. What and I know that you briefly mentioned on you know roughly sixty percent of Americans don't even make it to a plan you know quote unquote retirement because of unrelated issues that they had. No control over whether it's health or yeah. I, uh, I think uh, I was passing of somebody over sixty percent of retirees like did not retire by choice. Yeah. which is so how can uh, they protect themselves in that situation? Because from a holistic, uh, yeah, you know, financial right. planning perspective, there's things that they could do to, you know, outsource those risks to somebody else. Actually, right? no, that, it's uh, this sounds canned, but no, that's a genuine question. It makes sense. No. I didn't answer that. So here's the reality. Uh, I was thinking of people that are retiring when they're forced to retire in their 60s or early 70s, mm -hmm. where they get to that point where all of a sudden, health-wise, they're just not able to do it. They can't keep running the business the way they were running it, and the tops start to slow down, and they just stop spinning. And then that person might have a health issue. Nobody's there to spin the tops, and they're forced into retirement. Yeah. But the reality is that can happen a lot younger. That can happen to you in your 50s. That can happen to you in your 40s. Bad things can happen to you. And as a business owner, one of the things that you're three times more likely to get disabled and not be able to spin those tops anymore than you are to die before the age of 60. So what happens if you can't spin the tops? You're disabled, but you're alive. You need some kind of income protection, and that's what's called long-term disability insurance. So looking into that, make sure you have long-term disability insurance. And that protects you. It takes care of you if something happens and you can't work, do the job anymore. Life insurance, of course, is there as well. If what so, something happens to you early on, who's going to take care of the business? What's going to happen to your family? What if your plan was to eventually sell the business and have this huge nest egg to take care of your spouse and your children and things like that, and all of a sudden you can't 
do that because you're not there. So we are experts in long-term disability insurance and life insurance and making sure that's built into your strategy to protect you for the unexpected things is is also a part of it. it yeah. In many cases, it's like that tip of the iceberg. When we ask any of these questions, we could dive as deep into the, the core of the iceberg that's below the ocean uh, as, as you want to, but then we're just going down a rabbit hole that we just drilled into the iceberg. We might be missing the part that applies to you and, uh, and we need to know what matters to you so that we can answer those questions personally in a one-on-one -on -one way. Yeah. So bringing it back to, to just the answer. Yep, that's a good time for it. Yeah, so for those that want just the answer, how should business owners plan for retirement? We gave you four quick answers to that. Mm -hmm. Number one, make sure you're contributing to a qualified retirement plan. You might be eligible for saving twenty-three to thirty thousand dollars a year in a very simple, low-cost way in something like a single four hundred one k or other kinds of qualified retirement plan accounts. Be sure you're taking advantage of qualified retirement plans. Number two, don't count on the sale of your business. Uh, your nine out of ten businesses are not resold; they're just closing the door on it. So make sure that you don't count on the sale of your business as your only retirement plan. Have a plan B in place for that. Uh, number three, uh, we said it's kind of the insurance talking about, you know, long-term disability insurance and life insurance and there's, uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Let's go with that. So long-term, yep, yeah. long protect yourself and yeah. protect your loved ones and protect your business. If something happens to you unexpectedly. You're transitioning into retirement prematurely. Uh, in other words, don't plan on never retiring. Uh, that doesn't work. Uh, you need to have some kind of a plan in place. that's going to work if you can't keep working the business any longer. Uh, and that's where things like insurance can come into play. Long-term disability insurance or life insurance, those things can help take care of you if something happens. Um, and then fourth, uh, non-qualified retirement plans. Correct. There's always a way to contribute to something other than those qualified retirement plans. Uh, look at our previous show, LERPs, life insurance retirement plans, or uh, some of the other kinds of benefits that you can save into for retirement. Hopefully we said that fast enough that you can get a nice tight just the answer for those of you that are only listening to just the answer. I think that was pretty tight. Yeah, uh, that that's was good. good. Yeah, and just know this is just the tip of the tip of the tip of the tip of the iceberg, and there's so many more things we could teach. If you're a business <laughs> owner, talk to somebody yeah. about this stuff. That's because right. there's, there's, you're trying to do everything you can to run the business, manage your employees, deal with revenue, expenses, profits, outsource some of this other stuff to somebody else that knows more. So I, It was funny. I was just working on some quotes for our Something Smart About Money. So yeah. we're, we're going to start doing a daily quote for Something Smart About Money. So for those of you that are following along, go to somethingsmartaboutmoney.com. If we've ever taught you something smart about money, please go to somethingsmartaboutmoney.com and identify mm -hmm. yourself and say, get, count, get counted because we're trying to teach a billion people something smart about money. That's our goal. So I got to get to a billion. I got a long ways to go. But <laughs> one of the quotes that I was just sharing today that I'm sure you'll see come out on Something Smart About Money at some point uh, in the weeks ahead is, um, you don't try to cut your own hair. So <laughs> why would you try to manage your own money? Like you need to find somebody that has the right perspective on your situation because you can't see your bald spot the same way someone else can. <laughs> <laughs> and if you think about that, um, you know, that's, that's what we do. You know, we, we make sure your retirement income planning is okay. We make sure your bald spots are, uh, are covered up or your blind spot as it may come to your money. Uh, is taken care of. So uh, why don't we transition to the fun stuff for those, like those of you that are just like, hey, let's just move to the end already. I want to see the trivia. Let's That's do fine. some trivia. <laughs> trivia is always fun. I got, right. I got some some quick ones here All for right, you. All right, what do you got? Okay. I'm not going to read the answers. I can't even see no, that yeah, far. You're, it's fine. Your Go eyesight's ahead. not that All good. Right. All right. Go ahead. All right. Uh, all right, acronyms. What does the word laser stand for? Oh, my goodness. Come on. You're oh, a nerd, man. man. You, you should kidding? be able to get this no problem. Oh, I could give you like the first letter of the first word. Maybe it's right. probably light. Yeah. So I would think it's light. Okay. Um, so, oh, man. Break oh. it down. You could can get it. Laser. Is it even spelled with a Z? L A Z E R? No, it's an or S. L A S E R. It's an S. Because yeah. it sounds like it should be a Z. It every does. Time I say and it, I think it depends who you ask how they spell it. Yeah, all right, all right, all right. So uh, L A S E R. Light. Light. Uh, I don't know. Probably some weird word like actuating or effect or amplifying or so. I don't, yeah. I don't know. Maybe, is I, that's. Uh, uh, oh man, um, I I don't know. Okay. I, I'd be I'd just be guessing and putting no no that's good. You got you there. you pretty much got the first two. Oh, so it's light it. amplification by stimulated emission of radiation. Oh my goodness. Okay, and that's there some real go. heady stuff right so, there. <laughs> so what a laser is actually doing is stimulating light radiation. Yes. So it's like it's like turning on radiation and then boom, there you get the laser. Yep. Okay. All right. Never knew that. All right. Good to know. Thanks for the thanks yeah. for the trivia. That's yeah. good. I total. That's, that's what I'm here. For. Total whiff like that, which is <laughs> complete whiff. Not Stump even, the nerd. Did not even foul ball that. I just That's completely right. struck out. So it's fine. Okay. Well, thank you for the uh, thank you for the insights. You're Hopefully, welcome. Uh, everybody learned laser again today. What does yep. it stand for again? No, you can't read your notes. 
light amplification <laughs> by emission of stimulated oh, radiation. See, we got it Fumbled it. Oh, oh, okay. You can read your notes. Go ahead, Tyler. What light amplification it? by stimulated emission of radiation. Oh, okay. All right. All right. So, we, yeah. didn't, we didn't know it was going to go like that today. No, so. we didn't. All right. No, it's great. Now you uh, do. Thank you for joining us on Clear Money Talk. Uh, yep. Please tune in for your next episode of uh, Wonderful, Wonderful Enlightenment with this great guy over here, Tyler. So. Yep. Thanks, Tim, for having me, like always. And we'll see you guys next time. Cheers. Investment advisory services are offered through Clear FP Advisors, LLC, or Registered Investment Advisor. Securities are offered through Clear FP Securities, LLC, member of FINRA IPC. Exposure to ideas and financial vehicles discussed should not be considered investment advice or a recommendation to buy or sell any financial vehicle. Past performance is not a guarantee of future results. Investments may fluctuate and when redeemed may be worth more or less than when originally invested. Financial professionals are not licensed in all 50 states. To find out if Timothy Claremont is licensed in your state, please contact his office. ClearFP Advisors, ClearFP Securities, and ClearFP Life LLC are not affiliated with nor endorsed by the Social Security Administration or any other government agency and does not provide tax and or legal advice. Annuity guarantees rely solely on the financial strength and claims paying ability of the issuing insurance company. By contacting us, you may be provided with information about insurance and annuity products offered through ClearFP, LLC NPN number 19428377 and or ClearFP Securities NPN number 19749604. Any discussion of general investing strategies or specific securities are for conversational purposes only and should not be taken as a guaranteed endorsement or recommendation.